Yeah, welcome in. Welcome back to another episode of the Format Podcast. Not live, but that's okay, because what we're doing here is, you know what we're doing. We're going to kick it back and uh, go over this college football weekend, because uh, some amazing stuff happened. Let's get it. And of course, joining us to break down the college football weekend and to look ahead, we got my main man, Ryan Langford, former Fighting in Line Eye former Indianapolis Colt, former BC Lion, former Ottawa Red Black, former Saskatchewan Rough Rider. I always leave out one. Winnipeg, the pay. Winnipeg, <laughs> it's always one. It's always one. But what's going on, Ryan? Thank you for joining me today. Man. Glad to be back. Glad to be back. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, we're here and we're going to talk about the uh, crazy weekend that was in, in week eight of the college football season and then of course we're going to look ahead to week nine as we get ever closer to the uh college football playoff and kind of what we've all been waiting for but before we do that you know what time it is if you're here on youtube and you haven't already please make sure you go ahead click that like that subscribe that notification bell make sure you're kept up to date whenever we drop new content on the channel if you want the audio only version of the podcast open up your audio podcast platform hit the search bar type in the format podcast and we should come right up if you're enjoying the content make sure you give us that like that five star review and drop a comment all that stuff helps us rise in the algorithm helps us find more sports fans helps more sports fans find us and finally make sure you write it down put it in your phone set an alarm do whatever you got to do to remember saturday nights at 7 p.m we are live here on the format podcast and we'll give you the opportunity to call in talk to us get at me i love it i can't all right all right so ryan man we, we we're gonna dig right into this thing man this is uh an amazing weekend of college football and um before we even start going over that stuff man um let's we would be uh remiss if we didn't go ahead and let the people know that the first official college football playoff rankings will be released on tuesday november 5th and then they'll be released every tuesday uh following that until the final one on sunday december 8th and that'll be the final playoff ranking and the playoff selections and you know that the, however, the 12 seeds shake out, that's going to let you know what the matchups are and where. So we're definitely looking forward to that. I do yeah. find it interesting, though, that they're taking so long to do the first reveal. Mm -hmm. I, I, I would assume that that has to do with the fact that last year it was only four teams and this year it's 12. So they're going to need a larger body of work to go by in order to uh, make the make the first uh, top 12 selections. Um, what are your thoughts on one, how long it's taking, and two, um, this season overall and, and how you feel about it so far. Yeah, I think they don't want to get it wrong to start out. Um, mm -hmm. I think they all, the, the committee, as we'll call them, were kind of struggling and scrambling a little bit last year as how things kind of ended, knowing mm -hmm. that it was going to be the last of just having that many teams. And I think now they're trying to make sure that all the rules that they said were in place and how they were going to do things actually align with what these results will be um and i think that could be where they're struggling or they're just mm -hmm. playing the waiting game to get people excited um do you know i didn't even think what, about that you're probably right a bigger build up right happen, you know because they know everyone's looking for it they know that it's going to mm -hmm. look different huge marketing campaign from a business mm -hmm. side of college football yeah to yeah push out that all this stuff is happening but um, I'm excited to see what's going to happen. Uh, they, they did a few little scenario things on college game day um, mm -hmm. before last before before the games. And I thought it was interesting on how they just kind of broke down teams and how people mm -hmm. got buys. And um, and as far as them, all those announcers were kind of saying the same thing. Like, yeah, their committee might be struggling in, in some situations because right, right. certain teams are here, but they're ranked here and. Um, as a whole, I'm excited to see it just because it's going to give opportunity for a lot of teams that historically wouldn't be able to play for a national mm -hmm. championship to kind of get like shot, that. to get hot and, and do something almost like college basketball. Mm -hmm. So I think as a whole, it's going to be great. Yeah. And we'll just see how they can maintain the the rules or the standard for how you mm -hmm. get in and get out. Right, right. Um, so yeah, as a whole, you know, college football has, has been that much more exciting to me yes. here than, yes. than, than previous. I think a combination of things. I think 
media is doing a great job and of mm -hmm. social media in itself has just really taken off as far as sports teams, social media departments. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one thing that's building up a lot of hype. I also think, unfortunately and fortunately, the transfer portal being able to move on top of NIL deals that, you know, teams are losing their ability to have these historic programs because now guys can leave if they're upset. Let's just call it what it is. If they don't like something, they got the ability to just bounce where mm -hmm. historically if you wanted to bounce, you had to sit a year. Mm -hmm. And that rule is not really in place anymore. So I think mm -hmm. we're starting to see a lot of teams trying to try to find their identity with new players coming in and um, probably a little bit of entitlement with some players across the country mm -hmm. is too. So a combination of all that stuff, which has given mm -hmm. us this new <laughs> college landscape, if you will. Right. I think real quick, I think they really pushed it too far on the uh, transfer portal in that the, the easiest way to handle this would have been, right, you transfer and don't have to sit a year with certain exceptions, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously, there were waivers, but you had to go through the waiver process. Just all you had to do was make it simple. Listen, um, Coach Langford recruits me. Oh, great. I'll go play for Coach Langford. But great. Coach Langford got a better deal at USC, so he's out. Well, shoot. Then I get to immediately be released from my letter of intent. Like I can go where I want. I don't have to sit, right? Mm -hmm. Or whatever it is, even if it's after my first year. If he leaves, then then whoever he recruited gets to leave without having to sit. Yeah. Um, you know, stuff like that. I, I think that would have been too easy. But now the way you've opened up the uh the transfer portal, even though you tried to put the disclaimer on it that NIL is not to be used as an inducement to get somebody to your school, whether as a recruit or through the transfer portal. But we know that's going on. But um, yeah, they, yeah. they tried. But it's if they had handled this properly earlier, it wouldn't have got this bad. But it is what it is now. Mm -hmm. um, I totally agree with you that this year is probably uh, this is the most exciting college football season I can remember in a long time because mm -hmm. it will never be exactly like the pro model, but it's getting closer to being there in terms of. My issue was always um, I never liked this premise of a committee choosing the teams, right? Because too right. much politics gets involved there. And you literally could have a team that went undefeated. Yeah, they didn't play the greatest schedule, but they went undefeated. They did everything they could do with who was on their schedule. Mm -hmm. and, and in the playoff and they get smoked, then they get smoked. But they earn that opportunity. You and mm -hmm. I have talked about this. Mm -hmm. It's like um, a couple of years ago when TCU got destroyed right. by Georgia. And then you're hearing people like Feinbaum and Cowherd saying, like, you know, those those level of teams, that caliber of team should never be allowed in the playoff again mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. they should never be able to play for a national championship. Why not? Mm -hmm. They did everything they had to do to get there. And I don't know if I told you this. I probably have. Um, I did a show on this channel. And this was a while back, maybe more than I think it was probably like right after TCU got destroyed. And Cowherd was on his show and he was talking about how, you know, um, the recruiting rankings should play a role because obviously that shows whether or not a team has a chance against a bigger, better team, whatever. And so he was saying like the smaller teams, both physically and um, uh, well, you know, the physically smaller teams and the smaller right. programs, et cetera, right. they shouldn't, they should never be lined up in a situation where they go against a Georgia or an Alabama or what have you. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no, that's not it. Because mm -hmm. what I did, I went back and looked through, we know the NFL is the highest level. I went back and looked through all the Super Bowls and like half of the Super Bowls have been blowouts. Mm -hmm. So are, are now you're going to say that, oh, they shouldn't have been there because they got blown out. That's hindsight. Right. You can't do that. Right. If somebody earned the right to get smoked, let them go get smoked. That's what they got. However, yeah. that turns out is how that turns out. But if they earn their right to be there and play for that, that that's all that matters. So I think it's so stupid, the, the politics that get involved here. But we know there's politics and we know there's money and we'll get to the money piece in a little bit, but it's just like, man, but yeah, I'm, I'm super excited. Now we've gone from four to 12. And the funny thing about that is the fifth team left out was always complaining in the 14 playoff. Now the 13th mm -hmm. team that gets left out will complain. That's mm -hmm. the nature of sports. Right. But um, still, I think 12 is, I think 12 is better than what we had. Uh, honestly, I have been campaigning not actively campaigning, but talking for years <laughs> about the fact that I wanted uh, an expanded playoff. And I always said eight was good. Right, 12. Right. I like 12. Yeah. Yeah. I would yeah. Too. And I, I thought like eight it. would have been reasonable and respectable, mm -hmm. but yeah. 12 gets you that opportunity to have some of those other teams that mm -hmm. really are doing something crazy. They deserve That's right. to be not in there. That's I'm right. Not excited about that. But what I will say um, I think that the powers that be would not be happy if a lower level team 
made a run. Like, you know what this this 12 team playoff, you know what this mm-hmm. would have been perfect for? A school like UCF in 2017. Yeah. That school that went undefeated, that would have yeah. been perfect because I, I've said it many times. I'll continue to say it. I believe in my heart that the only team that would have beat UCF that year was the national champion, Alabama. Alabama mm-hmm. would have beaten them, but that's the mm-hmm. only team that would have beaten them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they oh, did look good that year. They, they looked really real did. good. Yes. You know, so remember, they played They played in the Peach Bowl and they played Georgia, who in successive weeks during the season, um, they beat Alabama and Georgia in back-to-back weeks, Auburn. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Um, UCF beat them in the Peach Bowl. I don't, mm-hmm. I don't know if Auburn won that. I don't think Auburn won the SEC title that year, but they played for it, I believe. So the point yeah. is, you know, the point is I, I like the idea just because I like shaking up the apple cart. I like the little guy. Um, I like the idea of a, a, a lower seed really getting hot, right time, getting some luck with the seedings and mm-hmm. and with health and and making a run. I really yeah. like that idea a lot. Me too. Me too. I'd love to see it. But, you know, we got what we got. We got what yeah. we got. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, you know, I do think it's better. It's going to be, excuse me, better than the 14. So let's do this. Let's take a look at week eight. Uh, like we always do, we'll we'll uh, run over the the week that was and then uh, we'll go ahead and, and do our look ahead. So um, a lot of big games in uh, what is this in uh, week eight? Mm-hmm. And I guess where can we start? I think we should probably start with. Georgia and Texas. So where are you on that, man? I'll let you open up Georgia and Texas, Georgia and Texas. Mm-hmm. Um, what was what was the final score on that one? Uh, 30 to 15 Georgia. Right. So what was I thinking with that game? Georgia looked strong. Texas had an mm-hmm. opportunity to kind of put that staple on. We belong here. I still think Georgia has done a, or Texas has done a decent job to prepare themselves for the SEC. I think, so, I think there still is a level of um, preparation bonus points, if you will. Like I think they've done a good job to prepare themselves for Texas to, to be in the SEC. I think so um, too. Georgia knew what they had on their plate, right? Georgia mm-hmm. is still hungry and still pissed mm-hmm. from last year and probably mm-hmm. the year before that. And they wanted to go out there and make a statement. And I think they did. Uh, they played the ball. They played well, physical. And I thought Texas was going to be able to hold up a little bit better versus Georgia. But I did too. Um, in the end, Georgia really took over. And I don't know if that is Georgia historically being an SEC school or texas not being in a position where they're playing from behind before it could be a combination of both of those things because you know texas might not have had to deal with the type of adversity that they had to deal with when they're going against georgia Mm -hmm. with somebody where it's like hey you leave the door open you give them an opportunity like it's it's hard to come back on great teams so um, that's where i stand with it all no i'm I'm with you 100 percent um I think you look at this thing and you say, uh, obviously, um, Georgia had lost to Alabama a couple of weeks Mm -hmm. ago. Mm -hmm. And so they're still upset from that. And I think they also had some kind of pride, right? SEC pride in terms of, yeah, Texas in the SEC now, but this is their first year. And we're going to let them know they're not going to just walk in here and and put their feet up on our coffee table. You know what I'm saying? And so – I think it was a very impressive showing by Georgia, not so much by Carson Beck, not really a believer there, but Mm -hmm. very impressive showing uh, by Georgia. And they showed that while they're far from the absolute, you know, choke them to sleep defense that they were a couple of years ago, they're still a very fast, very physical, very athletic defense. And even though Texas is fast, big and physical themselves, Georgia said, uh, what is Lee Corso saying? Not so fast, my friend. Not you so know? fast. <laughs> right, right. So George is there. Hold up. You know, hold up. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, he, yeah, definitely. You know, he, yeah, they, they had to let them know, like, okay, you know, you, we got something for you. I think at one point Georgia was up 28 nothing, and then 28-3 before Texas started to figure it out. Um, yeah, and that's hard to come back. That's 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 the mm-hmm. if If you're playing If you're playing a video game, you're passing the controller. After 21 nothing, like, you off the sticks. That was a rule. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. What I'm saying? Like, hey, game's mm-hmm. over. So yes, sir. it's hard to it, it's hard to bounce back from that. You know, they did a decent job getting 15 points, but right, you right. Know, it's it, it's hard to play behind when you're mm-hmm. when you're in a, when a big game with a good team. 
Yeah, exactly. And, and that's the difference, the, the quality of that team they were going against. And, you know, credit to Sark. He's done, um, Steve Sarkeesian, Texas head coach, yeah. he's done a good job building this team. Because remember, he was coaching under Saban at Alabama. So mm -hmm. uh, as the OC, he knew exactly what type of bodies were necessary in, in this conference and uh, what type of speed and just, you know, what a team had to look like in order to have success in the SEC. And his time at Texas, he's done a really good job building that. They're just not quite there yet. Now, that said... They could still win the SEC championship. They're not out of anything, right? Right. They could still win the conference championship. They could still go to the playoff, favorable seating. They could still win a national championship. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah um, there, there's a chance they'll 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 see each other again. There's a chance, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, yeah. But we'll, we'll we'll see. I think, like yeah. you said, Georgia Georgia was standing on business. On hey, this yes. is SEC. We not we we can't mm -hmm. beat a team. We can't we nah. can't let these guys beat right. us and, and start rolling. Yeah. And I think I think it was an even bigger statement for the dogs, the fact that they were able to literally uh, they went into Austin and did that. That wasn't Very that true. wasn't. Oh, let's we have to defend our home field. That was we're going in, kicking their door down yep. and beating yep. them up in their living room. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So, yep. Uh, yeah, credit due, man. Credit due. Georgia. Georgia looked outstanding. Really, really good showing. Sark made a couple of adjustments at the half. You could see that. Um, mm -hmm. A couple of really good drives coming out of the break um, from Texas. But like you said, you can't be down that far against a team that good. Um, you're almost never going to be able to come back from that. So, you yeah. know, but I wouldn't worry too much. Texas is still a really good football team. Yeah, good team. And like I said, they, they got one loss, plenty of time to just mm -hmm. make the corrections and, and keep moving and go all the way. <laughs> really, <Right. laughs> really good. Right. Yeah, yeah. All right, um, so we'll move on from there. And uh, this is one I know was uh, was tough in the Langford house, uh, Alabama and Tennessee. Um, so Alabama, uh, they, they took that L. That's the second time they've lost this season. And I do not recollect the last time Alabama was uh, had two losses this early in the season. And um, I it may be fair, unless they go on a run the rest of the way. And Kalen DeBoer is a very good coach, so it's possible, mm -hmm. but... Mm -hmm. um, unless they go on to run the rest of the way, I don't know that they can get into the, the playoff. But again, if they do that, um, they're still Alabama. That carries name value. That carries mm -hmm. historical value. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a playoff. And they're in the SEC. The SEC will likely get four teams in. So if they finish the rest of the way without losing, it's very possible they could be one of those four. You know, so yeah, yeah. I, I see that. Yeah. And like you said, it was it was tough in our household mm -hmm. to, to see them go down. And like you said, they're going to have to probably win out and going to need some teams to lose also. And it's always yeah. a tough yeah. situation, especially being um, any team, any team when you rely on somebody else to do something, when it's kind of out of your hands. Yeah. Yeah. An uncomfortable place to be, especially right. historically when Alabama has always been in control of their own. Mm -hmm. Always been able to say, oh, yeah, That's we right. know we're doing this this year or, hey, you know, this type of stuff happened. We've we got to make the adjustment. So this they, they got to come correct. You know, they're going to have to win some games and I think they're mm -hmm. going to have to play better as a whole in general. I think offensively they haven't been moving the ball as well as they need to. Jalen Monroe mm has -hmm. been not making the best decisions, but also hasn't mm -hmm. had as much time as he's used to. Right. So I think defenses are making adjustments to that. And um, it's somebody's going to have to step up and make a play and be the guy to, to lead the team, you know, for this remainder of the season and, and do what they need to do. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. So I think, um, you, you've you been talking football with me long enough to know that I truly believe like with every fiber of my being in very two simple tenets to winning football, run the ball, stop mm -hmm. the run. I mm -hmm. did, nothing is uh, that that may be on my casket. You know, it may be. I truly believe that run the ball, stop the run. They, those are, yeah. in my estimation, the two simplest and two most important parts of having a successful football operation no matter mm -hmm. how far they try to get away from it with modern football and all that. And this is just another example, right? Alabama ran the ball 34 times for 75 yards. Like how often do we see that, you know? Right, right. And on the flip side, Tennessee ran the ball 43 times for 214 yards. So what did they do? They ran the ball and they were physical up front and they stopped the run. Like mm -hmm. this is, this is not that hard. Like I, I get it. 
the modern uh, the modern game of football, you do need a quality quarterback and you do need a threat on the outside or two, and you need to be able to move the football through the air. However, if you want to win a good percentage of your games, hey, let's look at the Baltimore Ravens, right, on the highest yeah. level. You got to run the ball and stop the run. Number one against the run, number one rushing the ball. This is not that complicated. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, th this is what Tennessee did. Tennessee uh, gets away with a win. They're also six and one. You got you got some good teams at six and one in the SEC. Yeah. You know, A&M yeah. uh, and, and, and Tennessee, Texas, now Georgia, like <laughs> some good, good football yeah. teams. So it's going to be tight in there for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Seeing how that conference kind of shakes out. I'm I'm very excited, man. So yeah, Alabama, tough one. They have to win out. And to your point, they've got to sit back and and hope uh they get some help from other places. How is that being on a team and kind of waiting to see, like, okay, we've done everything we could do? Because that's the whole mm -hmm. control what you can control thing, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But now we've done everything that we could do. Now mm -hmm. we have to sit back and wait, hoping someone else loses or someone else wins or what have you. Mm -hmm. in order for us to have a shot at what we're looking for. How tough is that yeah. being in that spot like that? Yeah, it's it's tough because there's a little there's a lot of disappointment within that because it's like, mm -hmm. man, we had the opportunity to control this fully and we didn't do what we needed to do. Now we're just mm -hmm. praying and hoping that somebody else can have a mental lapse or somebody else can make an opportunity for us so we know that, you know, our hopes are still alive. But I think mm -hmm. as any competitor you hate to have everything that you've worked for since the winter workout, since since training in the summer to spring spring ball, training in the summer, all that mm -hmm. stuff. You hate that all of that work gets kind of put on the back burner mm -hmm. for someone else to do something, to take you to where you're trying to get to. Um, but also with that, you do know that if those things happen and we do get our shot, mm -hmm. we're, 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 we're locked in and loaded because we That's know right. that. We, we really aren't supposed to be here or shouldn't right. be here, but we're here That's now. Right. So let's block out that. It's a new season. It's a new mm -hmm. everything. Let's let's go ahead and win and, and make this let's go get it to, to the end. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, that, that's great. Um, Man, so, yeah, about how Alabama's got to sit back and wait. And it's uh, funny. We were talking about it before I clicked the button here and we started recording. Uh, Paul Feinbaum, he's basically he's livid. He said that Alabama is a train wreck and, you know, mm -hmm. As we discussed, this is um, the first time in a long time that we've seen Alabama kind of in this position where they've got two losses this early in. Now they're forced to win out. Like they're not usually the team that's back against the wall, you know, got to figure out what we're going to do in order to be able to try and have the success that we anticipated prior to the season. So, yeah, I'm I'm looking there. I'll tell you what, though, their schedule is manageable down the stretch. Let me bring it up real quick. Um See next week they they got a tough one next week Missouri Missouri yeah. I think that's an overrated coming, team too though yeah they're coming to Tuscaloosa but mm -hmm. again these teams are starting to see that mm -hmm. the, the big dog isn't as big anymore he's right, kind of right, you know right. kind of you know what what's really going on and again mm -hmm. I mean you need just a little bit of belief you need your team to believe and you can beat anybody in the country I think Alabama mm -hmm. will be able to. To, to bounce back and, and hold off. Mm -hmm. um, but they got to come to play because yeah. everyone is out for your number now. Everyone wants right. to be the team right. to truly put you away. To put the nail in the coffin. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I, I, I think for Alabama, and we'll get to this in a couple of weeks, is the big one is uh, LSU, November night yeah. at LSU. So that yeah. that's the yeah. one. Huge um, one. Yeah, that's a huge one. LSU is another team that's six and one, right? They've rattled mm -hmm. off six in a row since losing the opener to USC, which has since fallen in a punchy pit. I don't, I don't know what's going on with them, but um, yeah. So uh, mm. yeah, the SEC looks interesting, man. It looks yeah. really interesting. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's keep going. Where were we? Uh, week eight. Yeah. So um, the next one, real quick, Miami keeps finding ways to win, huh? The U. They just like keep them. finding ways to win. I like um, them. They're not dominant. Their offense has been good, but they keep finding ways to win. I think that's interesting. Mm -hmm. We're going to see how far they go. I, I have them ending up uh, playing Clemson for the ACC championship. I don't know if they did away with divisions, but I think they're in opposite sides of the bracket, right, in mm -hmm. the ACC? So I believe. Um, but yeah, I think. Mm -hmm. But I could see that as the ACC championship, though. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I've been playing each other. Uh-huh. And I tell you what, 
we buried Clemson at the beginning of the year. Those guys are balling again. They you coming know? back. <laughs> yeah. And and I tell you what, Dabo is that type that type of smug dude that imagine if Clemson messes around and wins the freaking ACC and and gets mm-hmm. into the playoff. He's mm-hmm. that type of smug guy. He'll he'll have a lot to say and he'd be making his stupid little faces and he, mm-hmm. you, know, hey, mm-hmm. you know what I tell my guys? It's BYOG. Bring your own guts. You know, he, he loves that one. <laughs> so yeah, that, that yeah. was going to have a lot to say. But I, I do see uh, them playing uh, the Hurricanes at, at the end of the year, and that should be a really good game. They yeah. they really bounce back. I, I thought it was over for them after the way they got destroyed in the opener. But, uh, you know, lo and behold. Yeah. Yeah, man. This I tell you, this season is so exciting. And I think part of that, too, is we know now that it's not just over if you lose that first game, right? So you if go. you lose that first game because now it's a 12-team playoff, you have a little bit of room to go ahead, get yourself back and, you know, dust yourself off, get back up and and try to finish mm-hmm. out the year strong, you know. Mm-hmm. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, speaking of that, we'll, we'll talk about Notre Dame in a minute here, but that's that's kind of the situation that we see. So uh, let's just uh, run down here. Um, so, yeah, let, let's go right to Notre Dame. Uh, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about the Irish. Uh, I think they're really – it's it's amazing to me how much they're getting punished for that Northern Illinois loss. Yeah, That might be one of the worst losses in the country for one of the big teams, but they have won every game since they're continuing to win. Uh, they've got Navy this week. So mm-hmm. they got to deal with the service Academy who is also undefeated. That's, that's interesting. Um, looking have, good too. Yeah. 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 They got to deal with that triple option, which is always tough. Yep. Yep. Um, they've Notre Dame's had a lot of injuries, but you know, they're doing their thing. Um, but that that's another team that probably has to win out in order to make the playoff. And of course you're going to see what happens above them, but I'll tell you what's interesting to me, right? Notre Dame won uh, 31, 13 over Georgia tech in a true mm-hmm. road game at Georgia tech mm-hmm. uh, this past weekend. And somehow managed to drop in the coaches poll from 11 to 12 mm-hmm. and a and M who Notre Dame beat in the opener at a and M keeps rising. Now, if you want to see Bruce go insane, and break the computer, let AM freaking pass Notre Dame in the rankings. Yeah. Yeah. Bruce will freaking lose it. I, I'm trying to tell you, Ryan, I, I will I will go nuts. Do you right. think that do you think that the SEC bias is that strong and that the committee will have that kind of goal to do that? I I, I don't know. We do know that the SEC that there is an SEC bias, or you don't say historically. <laughs> Historically, yes. there's been one because of yes. how the season ended with mm-hmm. four mm-hmm. teams. Right. Maybe the bias might not be as strong, might not, you know, we don't know. But we do know that, like you said in the beginning, when it comes to committee, there's still some level of politics that are involved. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I think we're, we're just going to have to see, you know, what it comes out to. I like to think and like to hope that they're really grading these teams on what they say they're mm-hmm. grading teams on and not, okay, we're doing this, we're doing this, doing this. Well, mm-hmm. SEC, go ahead and <laughs> let's just, let's just mm-hmm. you know, bump them up. Let's try this. But um, I, I, I don't know. SEC bias is real. It's been there before. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think with, with this 12 team, it might not be as strong anymore. Yeah. We'll I will say to some extent – as much as I hate to say it, to some extent, it has been earned that benefit of the doubt. Because I think I want to say since 2008, right? That was when Florida won 2008, 2009, Florida won back to back titles, right? Yeah. So when when you can do that, as much as I hate to say it, that was the start of a run of uh, what the next was that 16 seasons right. and five SEC teams, five different programs won national championships. Like that's kind of hard to deny, right? Obviously, mm-hmm. Georgia won chips. Uh, Alabama won multiple chips, uh, F- Florida won chips, as we mentioned, LSU won, and then that one a crazy year, miracle year, Cam Newton and Auburn. So, oh, yeah. oh, like, yeah. y- you get it, but I still feel like yeah. each year should be judged on its own merit, and you shouldn't get the basically, like, the, the credit, the benefit of the doubt built up mm-hmm. from over time. Like, each mm-hmm. year should be on its own merit. That's, mm-hmm. but, you know. Um, mm-hmm. So also the money piece. Twelve teams that that might start happening more because now it's going to be theoretically mm-hmm. more of a shuffled playoff system every year because now it's going to be twelve instead of just the four. Maybe maybe over I would the next, so. 
you know, maybe in the next 12 to in the next 12 years, there is no SEC bias because now there's more teams in there. More teams actually made it up, knocked people out. So mm-hmm. we'll yeah. We'll see. yeah, I think more teams have to have some level of success. And we got to get some winning out of the other conferences mm-hmm. in order for that mm-hmm. to be the case. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. Um, uh, moving right along, uh, we're just running down uh, last week. Uh, and I'll just touch on this real quick. I mentioned Texas A&M. They look good now, man. They look good. Yeah. They got one of the best rushing offenses in the country. Uh, they play good defense. Um, and pretty soon here, they're going to be coming up to play uh, LSU. I think that's going to be a really good ball game. Yeah. And that could, I guess, determine. Do they still have divisions in the SEC? I'm not sure. Um, I don't think so. I'm, yeah, I'm trying to figure out if they did away with them. I, I can't remember. I but. don't think so. Right. Um. Yeah, A and M. Uh, what next weekend? Uh, no, that's this weekend. A and M is at. Uh, they've got LSU. They host LSU. That's going to be a big one. Mm-hmm. And then they they end the year hosting Texas. Hmm. Yeah, right. Those so are two, I mean, those are big games for yeah. for them too. Texas mm-hmm, A&M, mm-hmm. Like they can if they come out on top of those games. That's right. So, in fairness, this I can say, right? I truly believe the head-to-head matchups have to matter, right? But mm-hmm. Notre Dame has not played the schedule A and M has, and let's say A and M goes undefeated the rest of the way, right? They went out during this season. They will have beaten a number nine at the time, Mizzou. Mm-hmm. Uh, they will have beaten a number eight at the time, LSU. Mm-hmm. And they'll finish with a number five at the time, Texas. Like those are huge wins. So yeah. like I couldn't, I couldn't be too mm-hmm. mad if the committee says, yo, you got to go over Notre Dame. But right. still, that head to head, like you, now you're telling me the head to head doesn't match. The head to head doesn't matter. So next year or whenever, I don't want to hear anything about head to head matchups. That's my that's my other problem with the committee is yeah. that they can use one criteria for one situation. And then something totally different for another. There's no standardization. That's mm-hmm. that's really problematic for me. But yeah, yeah, it's college football, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess that's part of the reason we love it. So we have something to rant and rave about. It is, and I, and and hopefully there will be mm-hmm. more transparency, and it will be more mm-hmm. cleaner as mm-hmm. they learn. Because I do feel like too. Um, there is still going to be some learning with this 12. Yeah. Like, not just going to be as easy as like, oh, yeah, well, whew, we made it out last year with only four. Now mm-hmm. we can do 12. It'll be a lot easier. It's right. going to come down to when they're getting to team eight, nine, 10, 11, tw- like, okay, well, how do we how do we get that team in there? Because mm-hmm. numbers say this, but it actually ends up there's three teams that are that fit this criteria. And, mm-hmm. you know, who gets picked? How do they get in? And, again, I'm glad I'm a fan and not on the committee because – that's right. I don't, I, we're going to see what happens. I don't know if you can get it right. It's easier yeah, it's, to get it wrong than to say, oh, yeah, they did it. That's right. Right. You know? That's right. Um, all right. Let's let's move along. Uh, I got to mention this. Uh, shouts to my guy, Ryan, the uh, number 22 fighting Illini, beat the defending national champions who clearly will not repeat as national champion um, not at at, all. In, in Champaign. Um, good win, man. Mm-hmm. Good win. I mean, Obviously, it's not the same Michigan team, but I love what I'm seeing. These guys are six and one. They are mm-hmm. playing good football. And, um, you know, who knows, man? Like, they have the opportunity to do something here. And it's yeah. it's good to see, man. I, I'll tell you, if it wasn't for you, I would never watch Illinois football, man. But I, <laughs> I, am, I am I am happy for you guys, man. And I'm man, happy for you. We are, we're excited, too, in Champaign. Mm-hmm. I'm excited because, yeah. um, you know, it's your alma mater. And, and, and mm-hmm. I've been saying Big Ten championships every year since the day mm-hmm. I left. You know, <laughs> that's so, right. That's right. You know, and, it, and it's still going to be Big Ten Championship this year. That's the plan. That's right. and, and how they're playing, they're rolling. Um, yeah. And yeah. there's a lot of opportunity. There's a lot of opportunity. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of eyes on, on a team. And when you get that belief, when you start winning and you, you guys mm-hmm. trust the process and, and the program, right. it, anything is possible. And they, they're, they're, they they got it teed up right. perfectly. They got it teed up perfectly for this week. Mm-hmm. Going into Eugene, number one rate team in the country. Um, that's the, everyone that's expects the them to lose. Right. Mm-hmm. Everyone expects them to lose, which is perfect. Mm-hmm. You can yeah. go in there with the mindset of like, yo, quietly, we really ain't got no pressure because right. they got all the pressure because they're supposed mm-hmm. to win. That's right. We go in there and play our ball. We get the mm-hmm. dub. But now they're looking like, OK, it's Illinois team for real. That's right. That's you right. Know. Hey, man, let, let's go. <laughs> line high. Let's go. Line high. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, and, and realistically, 
the rest of the schedule after that is somewhat manageable. You got Oregon mm-hmm. this week, as you mentioned, then Minnesota, Sparty, Rutgers, Northwestern. Like, that's manageable. And yeah. again, this is clearly a good football team. So, you know, if you can pull this off, this is the one. If you can pull this off, you got an opportunity and you will likely be one of the, you know, one of those teams from the Big Ten to make to make the dance, right? The the mm-hmm. the twelve team playoffs. So mm-hmm. yeah, man, let, let's go. Let's go in there and uh let's go duck hunting. <laughs> let's go. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Um couple more uh things I wanted to uh uh talk about from last week. This I t- last week was a good week in college football, man. It was, it was a good week. Um uh so USC, man, what is the deal with USC? What is the deal? From what I, so from what I listened to in terms of uh the college football media, Lincoln Riley's not in direct danger of losing his job mm-hmm. because I think if they fire him, they still owe him like 60 plus million. But I mean they got it, but I mean yeah, they do something, right. <laughs> something, something, something has to change here, man. Yeah, I mean, just they got beat by Maryland. That should never happen. Like that, that can happen in basketball. You know, Maryland's a basketball mm-hmm. school. That shouldn't happen mm-hmm. in football. You're USC. Like I don't, I don't understand what's going on here. Your thoughts? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> because USC. I mean, in the beginning, I think in the beginning of the year, we were projecting them to have a stronger season. That's right. Right. Mm-hmm. Um. But once those L's start coming in, you start yeah. losing your ranking. That's it's right. hard to, you know, to stop stop the stop the bleeding, if you will. And I think that's mm-hmm. where they're they're trying to be at now. They're trying to just figure out something and just get one win, right? That's and right. Um, it's it falls on the coach and it falls on the players. Obviously, the players got to play, but the coach mm-hmm. should be doing his best to kind of keep his guys mm-hmm. together. Cause that's the first thing that happens. Fingers start getting pointed defense getting pissed at the offense. Cause they're not putting up points offense getting mm-hmm. pissed. Cause the defense not doing this. Everyone has the answers and that's when things get sticky. Right. Everyone is yeah. casually throwing out, Oh, we transferring. It just, all that type of mm-hmm. stuff is just not what you want can be, you know, a, okay. a, a, a problematic if you will. So yes, sir. They, 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 they need to just get back on track and it's easier said than done. Right. They've got mm-hmm. another team. I don't even know who they have next. Let me see who they who they're playing next. USC, um, yeah, Rutgers, Rutgers, Washington. They should beat them, Rutgers. but Rutgers is physical and plays good defense. So like and they, they can yep. have a couple more losses. Nebraska physical and plays good defense. Although you wouldn't believe it after what Indiana did to them, that's another team quietly rolling. And of rolling. course they, they end up really hosting good. Notre Dame. And I think uh, you know Notre Dame is going to monkey stomp these dudes. But anyway, <laughs> guy. <laughs> yeah, so US USC's got some got some questions to oh, yeah. to to answer and, and, mm-hmm. and check the tape. But again, you just just need one. Don't worry about too much. Let's just get one, get the morale up, mm-hmm. and then and then try to go from there. But as far as their season and playing for a, a playoff berth and all that kind mm-hmm. of stuff, not looking good. They're shooting. Ain't gonna happen. Two, These guys are three two, and four. Shooting just to try to make a bowl game if you mm-hmm. can do that. And you know, that's that's those don't hold the same value as they used to. I don't think. Mm-hmm. Well, you you know what I say about USC in the playoff here. Not gonna be able to do it. Nope. <laughs> nope. nope. <laughs> Hang it up. <laughs> That's it, man. I, they're in big trouble. They're in big trouble, yeah. and I don't yeah. I don't know how they fix this, man. They are they're weak on the interior, defensively and offensively. All right. Uh, Colorado picked up another win, uh, continuing to play good football. Mm-hmm. Um, Defense much improved, uh, obviously mm-hmm. still not championship level, but much improved from uh, last season. So, uh, you know, they look better. Um, they are doing a somewhat better job of protecting, protecting, excuse me, Shadur Sanders. Still not a lights right. out whole line, but they look right. a lot better. Um, they won 34 to seven. So, you know, a- another quality win. And they mm-hmm. are just they're rolling along, man. And mm-hmm. who knows? I, I think uh, Coach Prime, Deion Sanders, he's telling these guys like, listen, at this point, all that needs to happen is you keep doing what you're supposed to do, and let's try to get to this conference title game, and who mm-hmm. knows after that, right? And, mm-hmm. and you know, mm-hmm. could you imagine, even if they don't make the playoff, just appearing in a conference title game in year two, that is a huge, huge leap for a Colorado program that was won in 11 two years ago. So, right, um, right. Yeah, that's, that is, uh, that's, uh, that's big. That's big. Um, let me see. Let's uh, see if we can get this 
Colorado schedule real quick. And they've yeah, they've got some they they got some games they can win. Cincinnati, Texas Tech, mm-hmm. Utah, mm-hmm. Kansas, and Col- and Oklahoma State. There you Oklahoma, go. You know, they can they might be able to run the table the rest of the way. Yeah, yeah Utah, you, can do, you can do that. Utah is not as good as, as I thought they were gonna be this year. And mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, 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 they can do that. Cincinnati's right. got a good record. I mean, Texas Tech, they, they've got two good records. So that's probably two, mm-hmm. two wild cards, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's the Kansas got a good offense, but they've turned out to not win as many games as, as projected going two and five right now. So it, mm-hmm. it's, it's still kind of wide open. There you go. There you go, man. I can't say it enough how exciting this season is. I'm I'm really loving this because, yeah. you know, in the four-team era, we kind of already had an idea of where this thing was going to go and how it was going to wind up. But right. this this is beautiful. This is beautiful. And you stop, watching, you stop watching all the games, you know, because yeah. it's like, all right, well, at this point, all right, might as well mm-hmm. just stay on CBS, watch these SEC games because right. this is really all it's going to come down to. Yeah. Now it's like, yeah. all right, well, shoot, mm-hmm. one of these teams might make it in. And once you in, you win it. It's 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 zero zero. It's a it's a new right. season. You make the playoffs regardless mm-hmm. of whatever you've done before. This is new. This is right. okay. You need to win three, four games, and and you there. Yep. <laughs> if that. Yeah. Right. Right. So okay. Let's let's look at this now. These are the last two, and we're not going to go in depth on them. But I just wanted to touch on this. Is uh, where's the rankings? Um, Army and Navy. Um, this is beautiful. Obviously, you know, having served myself being a veteran, this is this is so beautiful because this stuff means something now. Uh, Navy is now number 24 in the nation. Army is 23 in the nation. Army 7-0 and for the first time since 96. Go Army beat Navy. Um, <laughs> Navy is 6-0. and uh, Hopefully they're 6-1 and by the end of this weekend. They've got to play Notre Dame. Uh, Notre Dame actually plays both of those teams, so I anticipate – both of those teams will have one loss by the time they play each other at the end of the mm-hmm. season. We'll mm-hmm. see how that goes out. Go Army, beat Navy. <laughs> but mm-hmm. um, yeah. they'll play each other at the end of the season. And then what's likely going to happen, which I think is freaking amazing. We've never seen it before. They will likely play each other for the AAC Conference Championship the week after they play each other to end the season. I and it. I think that's awesome. And now here's the crazy part. It's not out of the realm of possibility if Boise State should – slip up for army or navy one of the service academies to make it into the 12-team playoff now do they have any chance to to win it no but no but they are they are teams that the way they play they can give somebody a lot of problems both in preparation and execution right because they know that they're not going to have the top tier athletes like the bamas and the georges and all that but one thing about these service academies they execute you to death man because they know they have to Mhm. Mhm. And that's just I want to say military as a whole. Yes. Yes. We're going to follow some directions. We're going to follow right. plans. We're going li- to yes. we're going to do what is told to do yes. by the people who are in authority to tell us yes. what to do. They, we're going to follow the rules. Y'all mm-hmm. going to I'm not saying we like I'm part of the team, but they're going to follow man. the right. rules. You get what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. I just think again with first year of the playoffs, 12 team playoff, if a service academy, if someone that's just so dope to get into the playoffs. I think for the, so. For the country, for I the think story, so. for America, for the time. Yes. Man, if, if they if they make it in, I'm pulling for them to try to go all the way because why not? <laughs> I just feel like that's why they're putting this type of stuff in place mm-hmm. because historically, mm-hmm. Navy, regardless of how great their season was, let's say this happened mm-hmm. last year. Yes. Both of them finished the season undefeated. Yeah, the mm-hmm. Army Navy game will be lit, but like. There will be no thoughts of like, oh, right, has to to go and yeah. keep playing. Right, now right. That that's a possibility. Now that's, I th- I love it. I love it. I love mm-hmm. it. I think it's 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 great for the country. Great for football. Mm-hmm. Um, and and could be I an agree. awesome storyline. Awesome storyline. Fantastic story. There, story. there yeah. you go. There you go. I, I think it'd be great. And uh, did I did I already say go Army beat Navy? Did no, I you did. It? One more okay. time. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say it, man. I got to say it. You, you already know what it is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh man. But yeah, I, that that would be a fantastic storyline. Definitely looking forward to it. All right, let's go ahead and before we let you get out of here, we'll um touch touch on um uh a couple of the games we're looking forward to coming up next weekend. Uh, this weekend, I'm sorry. 
All right. These are the ones I'm looking forward to. Uh, the three that we have listed on the uh, thumbnail here. And that, of course, is Notre Dame Navy. Um, for obvious reasons, I talked earlier about Notre Dame needing to win out to be able to stay in contention for the college football playoff and possibly for Marcus Freeman to keep his job. Now, there haven't been rumors that he's on the hot seat. However, if he loses two games and doesn't make the playoffs in the first year of the expanded playoffs, and on top of that, you have three years in a row, you have losses that you should not have had to inferior opponents, and you have a new AD who was not the person who hired you, all these yeah. things could become a confluence to move you right on out of there. And that is not personally what I want to see. Um, I've seen Marcus Freeman and his staff do a really good job in terms of uh, building this team because this is the fastest, most athletic Notre Dame team, especially on the defensive side of the ball that I've seen in a very long time. And I think that he can continue to really uh, get those athletes and those special players in. You just need you just need one or two of those guys on offense, not a Jag, but a dude. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah. Yeah, so you got Notre Dame and Navy, and we just finished talking about um, Army, Navy, and I anticipate Navy losing this game, but them with mm -hmm. one loss is not – that's not going to kill anything, right? Mm -hmm. Again, we have the uh, the Army, Navy stuff going on down the road, but mm -hmm. that's the first one I'm looking forward to. Um, did you have any thoughts on that, or then we'll go ahead and jump to the next Yeah, game. I'm, I'm – uh, again, I'm excited to see that game, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I, I'm, I'm, I like to watch – I've had my eye both on Army and Navy. Just mm -hmm. because, in my mind, they're having a season like they haven't had in a long time. Yeah. And yeah. with the possibility of, like, they could make the playoffs. That in party. is cool to see, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it's cool to see how teams respond to that because mm -hmm. that's a lot of pressure. We're not yes. really talking about that. But, fortunately, Notre Dame got the pressure on mm -hmm. because they should handle the game, mm -hmm. should win the game. But Navy's been playing some good football, even though it's kind of one-dimensional option doing that kind of stuff. Pressure's on. I think Notre mm -hmm. Dame's going to pull it out, to be honest with you. But Notre mm -hmm. Dame, I mean, uh, Navy Navy is a good team. So both of those are on my radar. LSU, um, obviously Illinois. That's um, that's, that's of course. the game of, of the, course. That's the game of the year for, for yeah. me. Yes, yes. So much could happen with a win. Mm -hmm. And you know, right. loss not great, but could still recover with a loss. But mm -hmm. if you win, that, man, man, it's it's a lot of it's a lot of conversations that might have That's to start right. happening now because it's like, yeah. okay, y'all down to twenty. Do mm -hmm. How how do you jump? How how do you do? How how do That's you? That's a great point. Because you know? they beat number game. one, I, I think a big part of that is what happens ahead of them. But if yeah. they beat number one there's a legitimate chance that they could rise eight to 10 spots in the poll. Mm -hmm. Again, depending on what happens ahead of them, but it could be a big jump, like into the college football playoff jump, you know yeah. what I mean? Into that top 12. So um, obviously I'm, I am rooting for the Illini. You're my dude. I'm definitely rooting for them. And I also, I want to, I just, I want to see as much good surprising outcomes as we can and I want to see us get like the most interesting possible, like you said, storylines going into selection and the most interesting possible freaking 12 team tournament. That's yeah, what yeah. I want. Just some, just some wild games, like some yes. stuff that would have never, never would have been able to happen mm -hmm. if it was a bowl game. And then even when you That's talk right. about that, certain bowl games are just certain conferences anyway. Mm -hmm. So in a situation like this, that you might get some teams that you know possibly never played before. I don't know how oh, they're yeah. going to do all of that, but mm -hmm. I think that's a benefit to college football. Mm -hmm. I think that that just helps. That just helps mm -hmm. everything, honestly. Right. So let me ask you this: in terms of the Oregon and Illinois, right? We mm -hmm. know Dan Lanning is. I believe he was a former defensive coordinator. I think he coached under Kirby Smart for a little bit at uh, Georgia, and so he came to Oregon with an SEC mindset. Um, he built his team again, much like Sark with Texas in that kind of SEC model. What do you know about the way your guys, the Illini, are built in terms of being able to stand up to that? Because we know also the Big Ten has traditionally been a physical smash mouth, punch them in the face um, type of conference. What do you know about how, how your Illini are built um, this season? And in terms of how do you feel they'll be able to stand up to Oregon's physicality when they go out there to Austin? Yeah, well, I I personally think it's going to really come down as all as all games as the trenches, right? How you can move yes. the ball. 
Oregon is powerful on offense, running the ball. They got guys that can go 80 yards with having the ball, and they got receivers who can catch and go too. So I really think it's going to be the one who is not making mistakes and who is not giving up the big play. The big plays mm-hmm. hurt, right? You throw a screen, they go for 45. That's a backbreaker. Third mm-hmm. and long, they convert it. That hurts as a defense. Um, we're going to have to get off the field on third down too from a defense mm-hmm. perspective. Mm-hmm. When it's third and whatever, third and four, we got to try to get off the field because that next play, that next drive, that that that, that type of stuff, can 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 come back and hurt you. Illinois has been able to move the ball pretty well, which was what what which is what I've been impressed with. Running the ball well, which has opened up the play action pass. We've got some quality okay. receivers on the outside who can make plays when they have the ball in their hand. Um, and a quarterback who's been making good decisions, not going to work, mm-hmm. he continues to make good decisions because that's all where it comes from. If you got a, a quarterback who understands a situation where he's scrambling out and you know got pressure, he might throw the ball away instead of trying to keep it alive and, and do something crazy. All those mm-hmm. little plays add up um, to success, to beating teams that, you know, historically are good with possession, with time of, time of possession, with making the big plays. Um, and some special teams are going to come, going to have to come into play, right? So getting down the field. If we got to kick a field goal, we got to convert to the field goal because there's nothing worse than driving the ball 40, 50, 60 yards, kicking a field goal and missing. Luckily mm-hmm. for us, our kicker has been making some balls. Um, and he's confident. They're playing with a little swag, and it's gonna be it's gonna be loud in there, right? It's gonna be oh, yeah. an environment. It's gonna be exciting. And as long as you don't get too caught up in the noise, which I feel like Oregon or Illinois won't do. I mean, they went in Nebraska, got that win. They they've mm-hmm. been in these hostile environments that mm-hmm. um, they should be able to overcome and and hopefully win. But again, Oregon is a strong, strong, strong team. They're not number one mm-hmm. by accident. Um, they've been playing good football, putting a lot of points on the board, and everyone's going to have to be on their P's and Q's and, and stay mentally smart throughout the game. There you go. So um, definitely good keys to victory. My my only question was, I don't know if you got around to this one, was did you feel like um, Illinois has built a team that physically can stand up to and compete with Oregon along the lines of scrimmage? I think so. Yeah, I think they do. But I also think they didn't build the team to play against Oregon. Like they weren't building to mm-hmm. compete to Oregon. They're building to compete for for the Big Ten. Right. Um, right and right. what they've been doing, they've been doing that now. Oregon being in the Big Ten. Yeah, that kind of mm-hmm. adds some flair to it. But historically, right. I don't know. Not historically. I don't know if Oregon has mm-hmm. been recruiting the same way for the Big Ten, the same way that mm-hmm. Texas was for SDC, as an example. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but Oregon, I think, is such a unique team in general. They got fast yeah. guys. They got speed. They're, they're more of an SEC model, I feel mm-hmm. like. Um, and when I, I say SEC model, I mean, I, right. I mean speed, right? They, they're, they're, mm-hmm. That's what Oregon is known for, speed, stretching guys out, playing quick, playing mm-hmm. fast. Obviously, the incredible jersey selection in combination, yeah. too, yeah. Um, adds right. a little swag to it. But I think Illinois is prepared um, for Oregon, even though they weren't – preparing for Oregon. Does that make sense? Yes. Last question on Illinois. Do you think they'll be able to bring enough pressure to Dylan Gabriel? And I ask that because I want to say he's a fifth or sixth year senior. He's yeah. seen it all in terms of college yeah. football. There's not yeah. a lot you're going to be able to bring in terms of tricking him or fooling him. Uh, mm-hmm. Like I said, um, I, I remember covering him at UCF in 2019. So He's been around, obviously, he played at UCF, then he played at OU, and now he's at well, Oklahoma. But well, mm-hmm. I guess he's at OU again, right? <laughs> but now, mm-hmm. now he's at Oregon. Yeah. So, yep. <laughs> um, he's seen it all. There's not a lot that you can bring to trick him. And I'm sure, you know, he's he's in the film room. He's got an understanding of uh, what type of uh, what type of defensive scheme these guys are going to be running and how he can exploit that. So um, do you think they're going to be able to get the necessary pressure to get him off his spot? He's uh, not a statue, but he's not – you know, not a super mobile quarterback either. Yeah, I, th- I think I think, yes, they're going to have to. They're going to have to experiment and they're going to have to try some new things that can be mm-hmm. different stunts with the defensive linemen, bringing okay. linebackers in or changing in disguise and coverage. Right. Having safeties coming down, mm-hmm. even though they think it's a blitz, it's not. They're dropping. Have drop back out. Mm-hmm. Just changing, changing how pictures look. Um, any good coordinator has already checked the film and knows how they come out what do they do do they clap do they do this and can move the picture around to make it look like something else will can confuse mm. the quarterback 
That's Hopefully right. that's what they can do um, to kind of okay. give them a little, a little um, leverage, but it's, it, we're going to have to, we're going to see coaching come into play more than mm-hmm. athletes. I think athletes are always important, but yeah. you're going to have to, they're going to have to scheme these guys up a little bit, whether for mm-hmm. play action, some trick plays from Illinois on the offense perspective and Illinois defensively, like I said, they're going to have to move around, probably try to get some pressure, maybe mm-hmm. bring some stunts and just and, – and, and and see what they can get, see what they're giving them. Mm-hmm. Got you, got you. Um, I'm going to mention this game quickly. Uh, number six, Miami, uh, hosting Florida State. That was supposed to be a good game when the season started. Florida yeah. State is an absolute dumpster fire. I don't know what's going on with those guys, but – they're terrible. I just wanted to. I just wanted to say yeah. that. Yeah, and they might. They might have packed it up. Honestly, you're Florida right. State, the players might have packed it up. Already saying, listen, we can transfer. We got one game. Like, mm-hmm. you know, like they looking at Miami. Like, man, it, can I go over there? Can I? Ooh, mm-hmm. Can I transfer here? Can I try that? So, it's hard when you're losing games and you know you're not really playing for anything. It's hard mm-hmm. to, to to stay in it, and especially right. now with right. the ability to you can leave. Mm-hmm. And and no one will ask you any questions, you know, because that that right. it can it can happen now. So um, Miami should win that game, but it's still a historic rivalry. Like, let's not forget Florida State Miami. Yeah. That's them games have always been big time, mm-hmm. heavy hitting games. A lot of That's a lot right. of pride, a lot of history where mm-hmm. anybody can show up and win. It looks like the Hurricanes gonna show up and win again, but yeah, yeah, you know, definitely we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how Florida yeah, State yeah. Can, can come out. Yep. Another one real quick, uh, Texas and Vandy. And the only reason I mentioned Vandy, we saw them beat uh, Alabama. Now, they're not going to be able to catch Texas sleeping. I'm sure Sark has these guys focused and Mm -hmm. ready to win out the rest of the way. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, there's always a chance. That's why you play the Mm -hmm. games. Uh, Clark Lee is a a defensive mastermind on the collegiate level, uh, head coach of Vanderbilt, former Notre Dame defensive coordinator, Really, really good defensive coordinator. I am. I don't think they are going to beat Texas, but who knows? I, I don't think Texas will be hungover. I think they're going to be upset, and they might just take it out on Vanderbilt. Yep, yep. That's that's what we would assume and hope. Yeah, that's but, what we anticipate. You know, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll 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 see what happens. Where's is it in? Is it, it is at, at Vandy. Oh, it's at Vandy. So mm-hmm. yeah, what time is the game? Four fifteen. Four fifteen. Yeah. Yeah, yep. we Texas should go in there and roll, but mm-hmm. Andy already got the Alabama dub under their belt, so right. they already got That's some belief. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They got some belief, and they can mm-hmm. be like, it's just another – if I'm coaching, this is just another team. It's, we've already done it before. Mm-hmm. Control, we control. We right. try to get the fans to black out. Like, mm-hmm. we, 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 we we doing everything we can to, to get That's us right. in there. Start fast mm-hmm. and, and do what we do. Yeah. All right. Um. Last one, LSU, number eight at number 14, Texas A&M. One of the nastiest places that you can have a road game, A&M, Kyle Field. Now, I I don't think that's too much of a concern, right, because LSU is used to playing in Death Valley. Both of those are 100,000-plus seat stadiums, so they're used to the noise. They're used to the heat. They're used to, you know, the big-time night games, everything. But this is going to be really good. Texas A&M runs the football extremely well. Their defensive line is crazy. Um, They really get after it. And again, they are looking to keep the train rolling uh, after losing the opener uh, to Notre Dame at home and but having won what five in a row since. So I think this is going to be a really good game again. You know, I'm not an SEC guy, but I think I will be sitting down to watch this. Obviously, in in this one, I'm rooting for A&M because the better Mm -hmm. they are, the more it helps Notre Dame. And um, Mm -hmm. Brian Kelly left us, so <laughs> you know he he can he can lose every game for the rest of his life as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> so yes, I'm a little petty there, but no, in all yeah, seriousness, yeah. I, yeah. I think this is going to be a so, really good football know. game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that one. Yeah, might be I a game we can Texas A&M too, because mm. that could realistically that could probably help. Uh, I don't know. I was like, would that help Alabama? Cause they got to play them later. They still got Alabama. Still got to win, right? Mm-hmm. Alabama still got to win out. But mm-hmm. Texas A and M could definitely pull out a win. You right. know, home in the nighttime. Texas A and M, like you said, hostile, hostile environment to play. Hostile. Like it's mm-hmm. they got the cowbells in there, don't they? I feel like they. No, they, cowbells they, is Mississippi State. Mississippi State. You're right. You're yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, that's that cowbells. That's mm-hmm. Crazy too. 
Um, but yeah, it'll it'll be it'll be a good game. I will be watching that one too. Yeah, man. Uh A and M, I like them because they're thirteenth in the nation in rushing yards per game. They get about two thirteen. Mm-hmm. They really run the football extremely well. And you know, as you know, <laughs> I'm big on that. Um right, right. Uh, they don't get it a lot through the air, so LSU will have to make that concerted effort to stop the run and and force Connor Wegman to pass. And I don't mm-hmm. I'm not so sure that they can do that. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Let's see. The matchup predictor on ESPN.com actually has AM uh, favored with 52 mm-hmm. percent of the outcome. Looking at AM winning, so mm-hmm. man, this is uh this is going to be good. This is yeah. going to be good. They Both might be giving them that home field advantage points too on that. Yeah, maybe so. If it would have been in at LSU, what would it what would it have been? Because that's pretty. I mean, mm-hmm. that's pretty evenly split, honestly. Right. Right. And I'm looking at this, and so it's funny. Um, LSU has to stop AM's rushing game, and mm-hmm. AM has to stop LSU's passing game, which is number eight in the nation, 322 yards per game. So, uh, oh, wow. I didn't know yeah. That. So the key is going to, I don't know if uh, uh, AM's back end is going to be able to hold up. So that defensive front for the Aggies is going to have to get home. At yeah. the very least, they got to get a lot of pressure, maybe not sack them but they got to continue to bring the pressure so we'll see uh what mike elko can scheme up another former notre dame defensive uh coordinator really Mm -hmm. good coach these guys are cerebral man and (laughs) i I guess you have to be when you're coaching up there in south bend you're not quite getting the same caliber of athlete that you would down south but um yeah no that that's another really good defensive mind in college football but really looking forward to seeing this uh lsu and a&m on saturday night at 7 30. Um, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. Got some good ones this weekend. Got some good ones. Now we're, we're, we're starting to get down to it. And, uh, well, we got about two weeks left until we finally get the first playoff reveal. Really Mm -hmm. looking forward to seeing that first seedings reveal. Me too. Me too. And that's, then it's, then it's really going to start. I feel like what, what? That's when people start. Oh, that's, oh, oh, right. Yeah. I got to start blowing people out now. Oh, we got a lot of people up now. Oh, man. Yeah. 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 (laughs) No doubt, no doubt. All right, Ryan. Well, listen, man, another another great episode, man. Thanks so much for being here talking college football with me. I know you're loving this. I know you're uh part of you is reliving the glory days. And and uh no. word on the street is um you you putting the gloves on, you you suiting uh, up on Saturday. That's word on the street, man. Did I hear that right? I'm, I'm suiting up and paying attention. I will not be running <laughs> any more routes. I, I'm done with that. <laughs> <laughs> No doubt, man. I'm sure they could use you, man. I'm sure they would love to have you on Saturday. Man. Hey, 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 I'm just, I'm just glad to be part of the team. Just, you know, that's hey, it. I, I lived it already. That's but it. But no, man. they got a good team. They don't need my help. They don't need my help. <laughs> I got you, man. Well, listen. Thanks so much for joining us. As always, uh, for joining the format podcast, really appreciate anybody who's watching. If you made it through the video, really appreciate that. Um, college football fans, make sure you hit that like and subscribe, and make sure you hit the share button. The share button is powerful. So we're gonna get out of here. We out. Peace.